Hello everyone, this is Julia for NASA Space Flight and I am here in Port Canaveral, Florida today. Welcome to Demo Mission 2 launch day and thank you so much for joining us for our coverage. I have been chasing boosters since June of 2016. That is the first time I saw a SpaceX booster in port and I've been hooked ever since. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what does the SpaceX fleet have as a role during launch, um, booster recovery, and then down the road with our commercial crew astronauts coming home after their stay at the space station. So let's get into that a little bit and let's also talk a little bit about what that looked like during shuttle, which was, oh my gosh, nine years ago already. So let's get a little bit up to speed. SpaceX definitely has changed how we look at rocket reusability and recovery since the space shuttle program. Currently, Port Canaveral is home to the SpaceX fleet, which is a large fleet of barges and ships that are dedicated to bringing boosters and fairings home, and soon they will be bringing our commercial crew astronauts home as well. You have two autonomous spaceport drone ships, or ASDS, known as Just Read the Instructions, JRTI, and of course, I Still Love You, or O-C-I-S-L-Y, those are the two converted barges that now catch the boosters that we see come back to port. We also have the sisters that catch fairing halves, or if all else fails, fish them out of the ocean. Those are Go Ms. Tree and Go Ms. Chief, or Mystery and Mischief. And then we have another three ships who are dedicated to crew, or they are also dedicated to commercial crew being brought back home when they splash down or in an abort situation. Go Searcher is the primary commercial crew capsule recovery vessel for SpaceX, and Go Navigator is secondary, although they both are equipped the same and can do each other's role. And then you also have Go Quest, and that ship has been with the fleet since the beginning. Their role is to bring crew out to um, the drone ship to support booster recovery and make sure um, that situation is safe and they board the vessel, they um, come back and uh, basically they're the babysitters of that booster and make sure it's secure and safe as it comes back to Port Canaveral. Before the SpaceX fleet though, NASA had a small fleet named Liberty Star and Freedom Star. So Port Canaveral actually is no stranger to seeing recovered pieces of hardware come back through port. The role of Liberty Star and Freedom Star was to recover the solid rocket boosters. Once the solid rocket fuel was spent, they would deploy from the orbiter and land in the Atlantic Ocean. From there, Liberty Star and Freedom Star would begin their recovery mission by going to the landing zone and hooking them up to the side of their ship. At that point, they then could return to Port Canaveral and enter the lock that would let them into the Banana River Lagoon. Once at the Banana River Lagoon, they could traverse north and enter into Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and Kennedy Space Center waters, where they would be able to offload them to be refurbished and used on another shuttle mission. So what exactly is the SpaceX fleet's role on Demo Mission 2 launch day? As you can see here, we are looking at Go Navigator. Go Navigator is the sister ship to Go Searcher. As of when I filmed this, Go Searcher was on the way to Pensacola to be in place at one of the abort recovery sites. And Go Navigator is expected to be located outside of Port Canaveral in case of a had abort scenario. So let's talk a little bit about what that looks like um, for abort scenarios on launch day. If you look at Chris Gebhardt's article, and we're linking that in the comments below, he talks a, a bit about how there are actually 50 abort landing locations. And with that, those locations are going to be monitored for weather prior to launch. So just like shuttle, we could have a mission delay if weather across a certain percentage, which has been undi undisclosed at this time, um, is unfavorable in case of an abort situation. But with those 50 abort landing locations, we already will have Go Navigator and Go Searcher in position. But 
Some of these locations are also located along the Carolina and Florida coastlines. With there being so many locations, Bob and Doug are going to need a little help from some friends. And that's when the Department of Defense Detachment 3 Human Space Flight Support Office comes in along with the 304th Rescue Squadron. They have been practicing to be ready for crewed space flight again since the shuttle mission, but they have actually played a role in recovering astronauts since the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo era, and then again during shuttles. So they've been on mission getting ready for this very day in case additional support is needed. The crews we're looking at then would comprise of Go Navigator, Go Searcher, and then the Detachment 3 and 304th Rescue Squadron, which can deploy from multiple locations to be able to aid Bob and Doug in recovery within an hour of them splashing down in one of those alternate locations. The second mission that the SpaceX fleet has on Demo Mission 2 launch day is of course booster recovery. The view you have right now is of two autonomous spaceport drone ships side by side. On the left, you have a view of, of course, I still love you, who as of watching this video is going to be out at sea and in place to catch the booster that just launched Bob and Doug today. And hopefully we'll be able to see that come back to Port Canaveral. And then next to that, we have GoQuest. And then we have Just Read the Instructions. So a little bit about Just Read the Instructions. A lot of us thought with all of the work being done in a hurry and at least two sea trials under their belt, was Just Read the Instructions getting ready to be out there for demo mission two? Well, that question was answered when Starlink was delayed so that the fleet, and of course, I still love you, and Go Quest could come back to Port Canaveral to be ready in time for Demo Mission 2. Just read the instructions. Definitely still has people on deck and working on it uh, as of me recording. And it is possible that perhaps one of these next Starlink missions will be the East Coast debut of Just Read the Instructions. There's a few things I can see that have happened already. Um, once we put crew on board something like this drone ship, you need a few things in place like the safety wire that runs across the stern of the ship so that they can do a crew transfer from GoQuest or a tug onto the deck of the drone ship. I also see life buoys and lifeboats in place. Um, now, in order to be able to go out to sea and officially be on mission, they do have to be certified. And some of those certifications come from the Coast Guard. So until they are certified on the checklist required by the U.S. Coast Guard, we won't be able to see just read the instructions go out on mission. Um, I am really curious, though. Maybe it'll be Starlink and maybe it'll be a launch not too long after Demo Mission 2. So here you have your view of Port Canaveral on, today is the 21st of May, just days away from launch. And in the background at what will be the new docks, we do have the sister ships, Go Ms. Tree and Go Ms. Chief, who will not be a part of the Demo Mission 2 Um recovery mission because there are no fairings to catch on Crew Dragon. Thank you for joining me here in Port Canaveral along with the ships of the SpaceX fleet. I hope you enjoyed my coverage giving you a little bit of an update of what to expect for Demo Mission 2 along with those ships behind me. The next time I should see you in port will be when that drone ship behind me returns with the booster that just launched Bob and Doug today on their mission to the International Space Station. The first time we have launched crew on mission from American soil since the space shuttle program. 
I'm super excited to watch along with you, but if you have any questions, please reach out on my Twitter feed, Julia Bergeron, or to another member of our NASA space flight team. We're excited to bring you coverage and thank you so much for joining us today.